Many of us are taught that helping others is an act of compassion and generosity. But is that truly the case? Brinette Brown, the author of best-selling books like Rising Strong and The Gift of Imperfection, has conducted over 20 years of research revealing that the most compassionate people, like the monks, are also those who have the best boundaries. Consider this, if you help others to the point of burnout, how compassionate can you genuinely be in that moment? You might feel more stressed, exhausted, and resentful than compassionate, right? In fact, helping others less can be an act of true generosity. By setting limits, you're not only being kind to yourself, but also offering a more meaningful support to those in need. In this video, I'll share three key benefits of helping others less and provide guidance on when to draw the line. But first, let me share a story with you. So a few years back, I was part of this community. The organizer decided to leave for studies in the United States, and he picked three persons to take over. I wasn't one of them, but I quickly jumped in and volunteered. Hey, I could help you run some events. I could give some talk about this topic or that topic. But after just one event, I was thinking to myself, hmm, why did I volunteer? I felt so drained. I didn't expect it to be so overwhelming. I never know when the participant will show up. Some of them were early, some of them were late. They arrived in the middle of my speech. They may interrupt you with questions while you're trying to speak. And I was always like, uh, uh, where am I again? Like, where was I? Like, there was so much work to be done. I had to plan the event, prepare the speech, guide the conversation, and handle any spontaneous situation that may occur. Long story short, it didn't go well. I was actually so stressed that I got sick and I didn't want to do it again. The reason I'm telling you all this is because we often overestimate what we can do to help others. When I was planning the event, my mind was racing with ideas that like I could cover this topic or that one. There's so many things I can talk about. But the gap between our expectation and reality can be so huge. The first benefit of helping others less is that it allows you to mitigate your own cognitive bias of overestimating your own abilities. Psychology calls this phenomenon the Dunning-Kruger effect. All this means is we often don't know what we don't know and we are unaware of our knowledge gaps. So we are not very good at assessing our own abilities. For instance, I initially thought that organizing events was straightforward, which led me to volunteer. However, once I began managing the events, I quickly realized that there was quite a bit of knowledge and skills to acquire, which became quite overwhelming for me. At that time, I wasn't even that great a speaker, and to present a topic while managing the participant is a disaster. Helping others less allows you to take one step at a time so that you don't take on more than you can give. If you find yourself eager to assist others, take a moment and reflect. Do you truly possess the capability to help them? While having the intention to help them is great, it's essential to evaluate your own capacity and also your resources. Do you actually have the time and money to help them or not? Once someone tried to hire me because I was jobless, but his company was in huge debt. He couldn't afford another headcount, which left me with false hope and ultimately made the situation even worse. I know just like me, you may have countless ideas and methods to help others, but, re but realistically, do you have the time and energy to execute them? We have to bear in mind that over-promising and under-delivering can be detrimental to both parties involved and also the relationship. People may start to trust you less in the future when you don't do what you promise to do. The second benefit is beneficial to both parties. Imagine teaching your child or your niece and nephew how to ride a bike, but 
you can't just hold on to their bite the whole time, right? Eventually, you have to let go. If you don't, they will never learn to cycle. They will be like using an exercise bike at home or in the gym. There's no real progress and no experience. When you help others too much, you're actually taking away their chance to learn and grow independently. If they don't fall, they will figure out how to pick up themselves and find their balance in their right and in their life. They will end up relying on you to hold their bike. And that's not great for either of you. Not only do you risk making them dependent on you, but it can also be draining when they keep coming to you for help. And more importantly, you take away their fun of exploration. Making mistakes in life is part of the human experience. It's part of exploration and the fun of being a human. Sure, you might be better at doing something than someone else, but if you jump in to help them, it's like when your kid is building a sandcastle and you just push them aside and say, hey, let me do it for you. You end up taking, their, taking away their chance to learn and have fun. The second benefit of helping other lands is to empower others. When you step back, you are letting them tackle their own problems and let them figure things out on their own. It encourages independence and instead of making them reliant on you. The more they learn to stand on their own, the less they will need your help and the less drain you will feel. On the flip side, if they lean on you too much, it can turn into a habit. This is especially bad when it comes to parenting. You really don't want your child to keep relying on you as you grow into an adult. They may start to take you for granted. For example, when you do things that they can handle themselves, they won't appreciate it as much. That's because to them, it's just a simple task that it, they think that it doesn't take much effort. And this can lead to laziness and a bit of entitlement. Then one day when you decided not to help them, it could get challenging because they might resent you for it. After all, they are used to you always helping them and being there for them. Also, when you help someone who can actually do things for themselves, you're not really helping them. All you do, are doing is reinforcing their feeling of incompetence and helplessness. Sometimes people get stuck in this mindset of learn helplessness thinking that I can't do this, I'm not smart enough. They'll come to you because they believe you have all the answers. They feel like you have some special skills that they don't. And when you help them, you kind of reinforce to them that you're somehow better than them and that you can handle things they can't. It might make you feel good for a while, like it's nice to know someone needs you and give you a sense of competence and value. But here's the thing, it can sometimes lead to codependency. They might keep coming to you with more requests because they believe that they can do it and you can. The third benefit of helping others less is it allows you to focus and maximize your impact. When I first started tutoring, I taught a bit of everything like Chinese, math, accounting, taxes, and I work with primary and secondary school students, as well as college and university students. It was pretty confusing and not very efficient since I have to keep switching between so many subjects. I quickly learned that when you try to help everyone, you often end up helping no one. It's re really important to pick a lane and focus. You don't want to be a people pleaser and try to help everyone because you will just end up overworking yourself and neglecting your own needs in the process. As a tutor, I used to overwork myself. Besides teaching the subject, I will find myself like unconsciously trying to help my students with their psychological issues and family problems. So am I teaching math or playing the therapist here? I wasn't picking a lane. I was stealing the therapist's job. And that's why I felt so overwhelmed all the time when I was a tutor. And I get it, we all want to help, but maybe it's better to focus on a specific group of people, a specific area, instead of trying to be everything to everyone. If you don't choose a lane, 
you might end up draining your own energy and resources. There are always tons of problems out there waiting for us to be solved. So ask yourself, what's your focus? Do you want to help someone with their health or someone with their finances or maybe help someone with their confidence? When you really concentrate on who you want to help and what you want to help them with, that's when you can offer them the most value. So where do you draw the lines when it comes to helping others? If you aren't feeling any resentment or burnout helping others, then there's no issue, right? You can help as much as you want. But if you're starting to feel resentful, that's a sign that you have hit your limit and it's time to set some boundaries. So it's very important to pay attention to what you're feeling at any given moment. However, once you start feeling that resentment, it might be a little too late, right? Sometimes you already have agreed to help them and you don't want to break your promise. So you continue to help them and knowing that you will be burned out and drained at the end of it. So before you help anyone, you always want to check in with yourself on whether you actually have the capacity and resources to help them. In fact, try scaling back what you think you can do. If you think that you can handle 10 tasks for someone in a day, maybe cut it down to five. You always want to lower your expectation and don't overestimate your abilities or you might regret it later. Next, you want to avoid doing things for others they can handle on their own. And I'm not talking about simple stuff like holding the door or passing a tissue paper because you're closer to the tissue box. Picture this, your family member is here and you're sitting here and the tissue box is here and your family member says, could you pass me a piece of tissue? And you are like, no, I'm not enabling you. You can do it yourself. That's not what I'm saying. As a family, we work as a unit for convenience and efficiency. If you are in a family of five, it makes sense for just one person to run out and grab some dinner or whip something up. There's no need for all five of us to get our own dinner. In my house, for example, I handle the finance since I used to be an accountant. As a family, we leverage each other's competency and that's fine. But everyone should still have their own responsibility. You shouldn't step in and manage their tasks for them. For example, I make sure the household bills are paid, but I'm not responsible for everyone's individual personal finances. Each person in the family still needs to manage their own money. The idea is not to help others with things they can do on their own. Even if they struggle with finances or don't have all the skills right now, it's a learning opportunity for them. It's better to let them make mistakes and learn from them rather than butting in just because you think you know a better way to do things. Unless, of course, they approach you for advice. You also want to pick the link and stick with it. And I get it, it's not always easy. As a writer and a content creator, I want to do so much. I want to help INFJ, highly sensitive people, and empath. I want to dive into topics like spirituality, twin flames, MBTI, and psychology. Sometimes it feels like I want to be everywhere, right? But I really need to ground myself and find a unifying team. Otherwise, I'll just spread myself too thin. That's why I eventually stopped being a tutor. Even though I made more money as a tutor, I was juggling so many roles that I couldn't focus on building my content here on YouTube and on my blog. If you're not a psychologist or a therapist, it's best not to get too involved in other people's problems. Sure, you can listen to your friends and family when they share what's going on with them, but you don't want to actively seeking out to solve their problem. That isn't really your job. And if you have an urge to fix someone and their problems, watch this next video.